China is pushing ahead, with plans to have people stationed on the moon, marking the latest move in its accelerating space race with the United States. Beijing recently announced a spate of ambitious lunar space exploration projects, which include building a base on the moon and having scientists stationed there. In a statement on China's Space Day on April 24, China National Space Administration, CNSA, Deputy Director Wu Yanhua said China will start the fourth phase of its lunar exploration program this year, which covers multiple things. The main goal of this phase is to conduct scientific exploration at the Lunar South Pole to facilitate the construction of a permanent robotic lunar base, able to accommodate long-term human stays. Welcome back to Tech Trends for All. Before we proceed, kindly subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated when we release new videos. Without further delay, let's dive in. China's lunar program is divided into three phases, the first phase being circling around the moon, the second being landing on the moon, and the third phase is returning from the moon. Wu's statement indicated the fourth phase of China's lunar program could possibly be characterized as staying on the moon. Wu stated that China's endeavor would be a science station open to all and openly run by different countries and organizations together. He also said China's lunar base project would be a three-step process and discussed the major objectives of each step. For the first stage of the project, China aims to survey and build the necessary facilities in 10 years. After that, China plans to build a science station for the second stage of the project, with engagement from different countries, organizations, and the private sector. The third and final stage would focus on operations, where the station would provide good conditions for global scientists. In line with the first stage of the project, Wu said China would be launching three lunar probes, Chang-6, Chang-7, and Chang-8 before 2030. Chang'e 6 will collect samples from the moon's far side, while Chang'e 7 will search for water and other resources at the moon's south pole, while Chang'e 8 will be used to test in situ resource utilization and 3D printing technology. In addition to successive moon probe launches, he added that China was planning to set up a satellite constellation around the moon for communication and navigation purposes. Wu also inaugurated an international cooperation center for satellite data and applications under the CNSA and a data and application center for the remote sensing satellite constellation of Bry CS countries. He also discussed China's plans to build an asteroid defense system, which can detect and hit asteroids. Wu said the CNSA plans to test a system by 2025 to 2026 by monitoring and deflecting an asteroid to avoid it hitting the Earth. Wu was keen to emphasize international participation in China's space projects. The CNSA has always promoted openness and international cooperation, and China has called on all countries to work together to build a global community with a shared future in outer space, he said. At the same time, CNSA head Zhang Kajian said China will uphold the principles of equality, mutual benefit, peaceful use and inclusive development, and adhere to the concept of peace and cooperation. He also added that China would make greater contributions to the exploration of the universe, people's well-being, and the progress of human civilization, and work with global partners to build a community with a shared future for humanity in outer space. These efforts are in line with China's accelerated plans to establish a long-term lunar presence. In January, China and Russia announced plans to set up a joint moon base by 2027, eight years earlier than originally planned. China is barred from participating in U.S. joint projects by the Wolf Amendment, a 2011 measure prohibiting NASA from cooperating with China without special approval from Congress. As a result, China is excluded from the U.S. Artemis program, which is the U.S.-led effort to establish a long-term lunar presence. Russia has refused to join the Artemis program, saying it is too U.S.-centric in its current form. Russia also decided to withdraw from the International Space Station, ISS, due to sanctions imposed over its invasion of Ukraine, severing one of the few remaining avenues for U.S.-Russia cooperation. Major spacefaring countries such as China, Russia, and the U.S. are driven by political, economic, and military factors in their lunar ambitions. In the wake of recent trends and phenomenon that have profound effects on the international system, such as the rise of populism, the COVID-19 pandemic, and the war in Ukraine. These goals are increasingly pursued within the context of great power competition, deglobalization, and the emergence of a multipolar world order on Earth. 
On pre-January 2019, the Chinese spacecraft Chang'e 4 descended toward the moon. Countless craters came into view as the lander approached the surface, the fractal nature of the footage providing no sense of altitude. Su Yan, responsible for data reception for the landing at Mayan Ground Station in Beijing, was waiting, nervously and in silence with her team, for vital signals indicating that optical laser and microwave sensors had combined effectively with rocket engines for a soft landing. When the spectral signals were clearly visible, everyone cheered enthusiastically. Years of hard work had paid off in the most sweet way, Sue recalls. Chang'e 4 had, with the help of a relay satellite out beyond the moon, made an unprecedented landing on the always hidden lunar far side. China's space program, long trailing in the footsteps of the U.S. and Soviet, now Russian, programs, had registered an international first. The landing also prefigured grander Chinese lunar ambitions. In 2020, Chang'e 5, a complex sample return mission, returned to Earth with young lunar rocks, completing China's three-step orbit, land, and return lunar program conceived in the early 2000s. These successes, together with renewed international scientific and commercial interest in the moon, have emboldened China to embark on a new lunar project that builds on the Chang program's newly acquired capabilities. The International Lunar Research Station, ILRS, is a complex, multi-phase megaproject that the China National Space Administration, CNSA, unveiled jointly with Russia in June in St. Petersburg. Starting with robotic landing and orbiting missions in the 2020s, its designers envision a permanently inhabited lunar base by the mid-2030s. Objectives include science, exploration, technology verification, resource and commercial exploitation, astronomical observation, and more. ILRS will begin with a robotic reconnaissance phase running up to 2030, using orbiting and surface spacecraft to survey potential landing areas and resources, conduct technology verification tests, and assess the prospects for an eventual permanent crew base on the moon. The phase will consist of Chinese missions, Chang'e 4, Chang'e 6 sample return, and the more ambitious Chang'e 7, as well as Russian Luna spacecraft, plus potential missions from international partners interested in joining the endeavor. Chang'e 7 will target a lunar south pole landing and consist of an orbiter, relay satellite, lander, and rover. It will also include a small spacecraft capable of hopping to explore shadowed craters for evidence of potential water ice, a resource that, if present, could be used in the future for both propulsion and supplies for astronauts. CNSA will help select the site for a two-stage construction phase that will involve in-situ resource utilization, ISRU, test with Chang'e 8, massive cargo delivery with precision landings, and the start of joint operations between partners. ISRU, in this case, using the lunar regolith, the fine dust, soil, and rock that makes up most of the moon's surface, for construction and extraction of resources, such as oxygen and water, would represent a big breakthrough. Being able to use resources already on the moon means fewer things need to be delivered, at great expense, from Earth. That's all I have for you guys for today. If you liked watching this video, please make sure to click the like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the bell icon so that you may be notified when we upload a new video. Thanks for watching.